Hello and welcome to the new video. Today we're gonna to take a look at a new Pokemon for the Great League at least with plus Cephalon being available now through the quest that you get for free. You have to do two raids to get this Pokemon and I haven't done this for quite a long time but I would really appreciate it if you leave a like on the video. Let's try to aim 666 likes on this video. would really appreciate it and if we go at this we might gonna take a look at another Pokemon that's now eligible for the Great League Staka Taka. You can also get this Pokemon now. So if you want to see a video for this today as well feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you have not already but let's take a look at the team and i have to say this team worked out super well i went way positive with a plus cephalon in like kind of higher up elo range right now and it is quite madness isn't it like honestly this pokemon was so strong like i can't wait to show you all the games here today I, it was like a long time since i had so much fun with the pokemon again like a look at it look at the incinerate damage against one of the bulkiest pokemon of the Oxus defense here that is quite wild finally some kind of fun again for the great league is just lovely and look at them forfeiting so many people did not really have a chance against this thing. Look at the next battle. This was actually the first battle that I did. Like, again, all the battles are always randomized in the video. I don't really choose the order of it. So, Aquatil coming through here against the Alolan Ninetales. So this is going to be able to get the shield from them as they decide to go for their own charge move. What I can go for is I can go for a Stonish next. And either I get the final shield, which is going to free up the way for Cephalon, or I'm going to take the knockout. That's at least what I thought. But honestly, it is going to be even better for me because I can even still get the knockout here while getting the shield. And so we can align our Blacephalon later on against these Steelix. I can have my Gudra against whatever they have in the back. And Blacephalon plus Gudra is actually nearly a perfect core in the current meta. It actually took me quite a while to find like a good team around Blacephalon. It's quite difficult to really have fire type Pokemon in that um, Great League Remix Cup meta. But um, this team worked amazingly. And honestly, Gudra, thanks to Thunder Punch, actually, is so much better for this Pokemon. Thunder Punch helps out really, like, a lot against, like, something like a Mantine here. And so the opponent forfeits again. Would have really liked the matchup for off plus Cephalon against the Steelix, but we can't have it all. Double against us in the next matchup. It's going to be a little bit of a trickier one, because I did not expect the insane amount of damage that this Pokemon can actually do against the Gudra. Look at this, like it's going to two-shot us, basically. And that's not really something I want to take. Also, I don't really want to go for um, yeah, non-stab moves against that thingy, so I kind of decided to swap out into my Quagsire, keep my lead alive, try to go for some stab moves here. And yeah, I just, I don't know, like, I don't really like to throw non-stab Awkward Tails of my Gudra against the opponent, especially if I can use that later on, most likely, to hit something with super effective damage. And that's, like, the cool thing about Gudra. Having really good, uh, right, uh, like, really good coverage, uh, really good Reggie still here. Now, really good coverage, of course, helps out in a lot of scenarios. Like, no matter what they really have in the back, Gudra are usually going to be able to hit at least for neutral damage. And so, like, leaving the energy on that is quite helpful. But also... I want to tell, like, let you take a look here at the amount the Incinerate is going to do next. Like, look at the damage of Incinerate now. We're going to go into the Blacephalon. One of the bulkiest Pokemon in Registeel getting just two shot by an Incinerate is amazing. Let's see what they're going to do here to retaliate. Oh, it's a Steelix. Wow, we can go for Mystical Fire. Oh my god, let's see how this is going to go. They actually decide to let the move go through and with this. That Steelix is going to go down and Blastephalon is going to go to town. We will be able to just use another shield here and the opponent has no chance. And they're just going to go down to the Incinerate. Um, honestly, you see also here for today, the battles are not as sped up as usual. Uh, maybe you like this one a little bit more. I'm not too sure. We can see if we're going to do this whole feature as well. The thing is, I did two entire sets with this team. Every single battle that I did, by the way, with this team is going to be in today's video. There's nothing cut out. Everything that I ever did with this team, you're going to see here today. Um, but basically, uh, I only had footage of 22 minutes for two sets. Just because Blacephalon is speeding up those battles so rapidly, it is quite wild. Here I make a mistake. I decided to go for a Stone Edge, which is something that I couldn't do in this possession that I was in. Why couldn't I do this? Because the opponent has um, Emporion and they have the safe swap of Dragonair. And I've already made a video about this kind of team as well. It's not that I say, oh, they copied my team. Like, this is a quite common um, combination. And in the back, there's going to be a Dragonite. And you would especially as well, after I went for the first Stone Edge, and I was like, no way, like it's going to be like such a difficult one to come back from this one. And as you can see here, 
The one issue with Blacephalon is like one turn fast moves that do a ton of damage because you just don't have bulk. You just have no bulk at all. And so they're going to win this battle. Maybe could have won this one actually if I just knew how to play this one out a little bit better. I think this was the annoying one. Let's find out here. I think it was a very annoying battle here. We're gonna see Thunder Punch coming through all totally fine. By the way, like lag, I think I don't know if I said before, lag was insane today. I don't know what was happening. It was like very clunky a lot of times. I was just not able to go for fast moves at all. And I was just standing around. I don't know why. But here you saw me not going for a shield. And I decided last second to go for a shield for the Shadow Ball. And it was a bubble beam. And that was quite a day. Like definitely not what I wanted to shield up there. But um, here the opponent gets a free fast move in again. Because there was some lag. Again you're not going to see lag as much as I did. Because it's sped up. Like sped up kind of covers up the lag for Niantic, which is kind of a little bit annoying, but anyway, we're gonna see um, the bubble beam coming through here, going to knock me out, which is fine, and I can go for the full mud shot down with my Quagsire, which is going to give me actually a very good secondary matchup as the Superior comes in, and look at the damage here, and look at the um, opponent's Gliger coming in, and we can go for the Mystical Fire, it is step, it is not a great move, but it's going to debuff them guaranteed, Mystical Fire is an Icy Wind clone, and as you're gonna see here as well, the opponent decides to go for a charge move, and look at the incinerate damage again. We can just knock out that Gliger again with like two incinerates as a mystical fire gonna approach that superior. And this is gonna get the shield. But not only this, we're also going to be able to get this move off. And this is going to be crucial because without that move, I did not have a chance of really knocking them out with a Stone Edge. And now I have some hope. Hopefully it's going to be enough. Is it going to be enough non-step Shadow Stone Edge? It is not. But we can still farm them down and win the battle. Next opponent, I kind of learned from the last matchup against um, the opponent they are most likely going to lead by Gudra for like stuff laid on in the back, and so I decided to stay in here and go into with my basically with my cracks I am. And the opponent decided to swap out into a Gliger for whatever reason. I do not understand this play at all. Like, why would you want to go into a matchup like this? Like, I don't know, maybe I thought I have like a Mud Bomb instead of Awkward Tail. I do not know, but like, this is going to be a great matchup. That's at least what you would think. But what is actually the case is, this is an amazing matchup. Like, this is absolutely wild, and you're going to see very soon why. We're going to get two shields and even a knockout against the opponent because they played it a little bit too risky. Bye bye, Gliga. We have a two shield advantage with Blacephalon, knowing that one Pokemon already is very weak to Blacephalon with that Empoleon. And we can see the Typhlosion in the back. What this means is, we can go into our Gudra. Um, Gudra can just take the moves, like no matter what, Thunder Punch coming through most likely, or the, bla like, the Blast one totally fine. And they swap out into the Emporion, and it's time. It is time for the Clown to shine. We will be able to use a shield onto that Hydro Cannon, and if they get to another one, we still have a shield left, but you're just going to go for the full farm down. Like this is, again, reminder, this is neutral damage. It does not look like neutral damage. It is doing so much damage against the opponent. We have like basically 100, okay, we have 80 energy there, and a Shadow Ball is coming through we win every single cmp type by the way this pokemon has no bulk at all and so a ton of attack and we can move on to the next opponent gudra mirror in the lead um this is going to be a little bit of an interesting one because um both of us is going going to have basically your own your resisted charge moves but i can go for the awkward tier here trying to force a shield from the opponent if they want to keep alignment and then do exactly this and so they make an interesting play by swapping out into the Steelix. Was a little bit clunky here on swapping out, but you're gonna see some other issue very soon as well with my Quack Zion. Um, Psychic things coming through, that's fine. I am gonna go ahead and go for an Awkward Tail, all totally fine, but look at um, basically what's happening after this Awkward Tail. He tried to go for one more fast move and then go for the charge move, and apparently everything worked, but you looked like it looked really, really bugged. Like it literally looked so bugged, and I was like kind of scared there for a little bit. But we are going to be able to knock them out. As they decide to go for a charge move, I can let the move go through. I could have also used the shield and try to go for another awkward tail. But now it's time for Blastephalon to shine. I get one more free fast move in here. This hopefully going to knock out the Udra. I'm not too sure about it. No, it does not. And they're going to have a Typhlosion in the back. And that's going to be a little bit of an issue because. While our incinerate does insane amount of damage, look at the opponent's incinerate, and I did not expect that it would do that much. And I make a little bit of a mistake by staying in for that long. I should have swapped out immediately into my Gudra after my own charge move, because Aqua Teal is going to be easily enough, but we can win no matter what. Next opponent coming through. We're going to have a mediocre lead. We can swap out and we're going to get out the Mantine. So far, everything is kind of fine for me. I can go for a Stone Edge here, try to force a shield or get the damage onto them. If that will knock them out, it does around like 80% damage, I think, against them. But um, we're going to get the shield, and I'm actually quite happy with that, because again, what you kind of want to have with Blacephalon is 
especially like a one or two shields on your side and zero shields on the opponent's side. If the opponent has shields, it's going to be kind of tough, especially like, I guess two shield scenarios is also fine. Like you need shields on your own side for sure. Like if you don't have shields on Blacephalon, you're kind of screwed. But you also kind of want to get rid of the opponent's shields because a Shadow Ball basically one-shots everything in the meta. Like honestly, it is insane. It has 1,200 bulk points, which is the lowest I've seen other than like, the Oxus attack, which I think has like 900 bulk points. Like it has half of the bulk of an Armorion, which is kind of mad. But yeah, here sadly Dragonite and back is going to be a counter for us. Quite a nice lead here. Manta is going to be a Pokemon that we can at least hit while. Super effective with it. Um, Legacy Thunder Punch. Legacy, of course, from the last community day. It is only really something that's decent in the Great League because of the um, lesser bulk that Pokemon have. Because otherwise, like in Master as well as the Ultra League, Thunder Punch just doesn't do the damage. Like even if you're going to have like super effective damage, that barely does anything. Here we had some like as well before the opponent swapped into the Polyrath, which was a little bit annoying. But um, I can just like go for the Thunder Punch, get the shield swap out because I don't want to give them free farm and just hope for the best here. Because we would knock them out with a Shadow Ball for sure. Like no matter what they're going to try to do here, Shadow Ball would be enough to knock them out. But um, they, of course, still have a shield left. They have some energy left. And I would imagine that they kind of want to try to at least go ahead and, yeah, go for another charge move here. Mostly swap out eventually. I'm not too sure. Maybe they're going to be able to knock them out. But Ice Wind coming through, they're swapping out into the cracks, and I'm forced to go for that Mystic of Fire. I would have not been able to reach a Shadow Ball. They just outspeed me in time there. So, like, that's going to be, sadly, something where the opponent is going to have a huge advantage now because they get a ton of energy in. Issue is here for me as well. I am forced to go into my own Crack Zaya, and I'm going to have to try to catch more, very likely, like a move there um, with our Gudra, which you're going to be able to do. But at the end of the day, like that's just an awkward here. And the opponent still has quite a lot of health on that um, Polyrath, and so I'm going to try to overfarm. I kinda going to have to risk a CMP tie on the next charge move. I have a lot of attack on my Crack Zaya, so I was kind of hopeful for it, but I lose a CMP tie, and that's game over. Not too sure if I even would have won if I won the CMP tie, so I think all is fine. We can move on to the next opponent. Final battle for today, Deoxys Defense there again. If you have not, leave a like in the video. Feel free to do that and also feel free to subscribe as it is free and it helps me out quite a bit, especially in the current Canal Rafa time for Pokemon Go. Hopefully there are going to be some better times. Recently I made a video as well about um, the teaser build for... Teaser build? Teaser picture um, for um, the uh, next anniversary or like the 8th anniversary where we see already Generation 8 going to be released. Gigantamaxing and um, Dynamaxing very likely going to be released here. You see some like as well, by the way, by the crack. I am. So like there's a lot to come for Pokemon Go in the future and I'm hopeful that it's going to be a little bit better than what it is for like the last year. Um, so yeah, hopefully we're going to have a great future for Pokemon Go. As Stone Edge, good to be able to get the shield from the opponent. That was not really ideal for me. I was really hoping that I would be able to um, just knock them out or get them kind of low because now like what am I going to do here? I have my Gudra which can still go for an awkward here. But I have to hope that Blacephalon can sweep in an entire team. And already the lead here, like the um, Gaslord, is going to be a very tough one for us to deal with. And so we have to hope and pray. They decide to swap out straight away into the Polyrath, and we're going to see now how much Shadow Ball is going to do. Mm, let's see. Most likely just like what? 50%, 60%. No, we're just going to one-shot them straight away. In comes the Oxus. We can use a shield. It is actually going to be, interestingly enough, a rock side, if I remember correctly, which is going to allow us to definitely get to a Mystical Fire in time, which we have to go straight for it. And so we might actually be able to get that reverse sweep with the Blossephalo knocking out two Pokemon already, but sadly, Dragon Tail is a bit too much. And this is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Check out the video on the screen, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.